Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Work. My name is Keith, and we're in here at Uberlo. 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 The same place. Greetings. I'm Tom. Welcome back to the shop. And I have a different. As they near 24,000 feet, the crew settles in for what? Hey, welcome back. End of the year. Last year, I did. On this episode of Mythbusters, usually you fill potholes. When it comes to cooking, I need all the help that I can get. So the question is, is that $16? Oh, oh. Hello! Uh, well, in this episode of Finnugrik Machining, we are going to finalize the knurling tool. First of all, we are going to attach a spring to it. <laughs> yeah, uh, a spring. And then we are going to uh, make the uh, tensioning mechanism. After that, uh, there will be some knurling uh, with that tool, hopefully. And uh, yeah. That's about it. Uh, hopefully this becomes a very usable tool. And as I have uh, already said, uh, the technical drawings uh, are av available in my uh, Google Drive. Uh, the link is below. Uh, so, uh, let's start with the spring. <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, working with this uh, spring now. Uh, this is a piece of uh, piano wire, musical wire. The thickness is about one millimeter. And uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, pretty stiff. And uh, there is one problem with this. When these come out, when they are delivered, uh, they are like this in a roll. And it's all, it's uh, like, uh, it is readily curved, <laughs> so straightening it, uh, well, I tried, uh, tried to straighten this, but it's, uh, it's not very easy. So, if you know a good way of making this straight, please comment below how to do it. Uh, I will make a video out of that, because this is some uh, problem that I run uh, quite often across with. Uh, uh, like a uh, curved piano wire, which should be actually straight. So, okay, now, about the spring. Uh, we need it to be U-formed. And uh, so I need to make here in the center a U-turn. And so that the radius uh, is uh, compatible with uh, the center point of this uh, tool. Uh, well, uh, that I can, uh, that, uh, that I know how to do. Uh, let me show you. So I have uh, here two pins uh, attached uh, to my uh, drill press, press table. There are some T nuts under, under there, etc. So and, uh, they have a gap uh, about two millimeters uh, in between them. And uh, now I just place this thing here in between those pins and then I start uh, to twist it. Uh, and I hold it against the table so that uh, my twist becomes uh, sort of straight. So, and I don't twist a lot at a time. I move it a little bit uh, uh, ahead. Well... 
I can feel when it uh, twists and when, when, when it yields. And uh, I only twist a little bit at a time. Let's see now. Now we have a curve like this. Okay, let's start again. And it's uh, just a little bit at a time. Don't become greedy here. This is uh, a definite mistake here to become greedy. Okay, a little bit more now. Okay. Yeah, it feels uh, really, actually really good. So now the next step is to unneal it uh, a little bit. Because uh, we need, need to make sharp corners into that. And uh, you cannot make sharp corners into this material. Uh, yes, you can. I have made a few here just to uh, <laughs> prove that, uh, well, I can do that. But I don't want to, uh, because uh, I want them to be in quite exact places. And this is really hard to come by. So, uh, well, I just mark where. Where should it be? <laughs> and uh, the annealing, annealed area start. And let's see now. Uh, it's uh, this side starts about. Oh man, this is. Okay. About there. And this one. About. There. Oh. Yeah, it's uh, it, it looks symmetric. <laughs> okay, so now I know where to anneal it. So you probably noticed that I have here this uh, propane torch, which I then use to anneal it uh, each side. So let me zoom you nearer to see how to do this annealing. It's uh, <laughs> Not very complicated. <coughs> so, this is just a very simple uh, propane torch, and uh, yeah, like that. And now, the intention here is to heat it up to red glow. And uh, this should be done in a way that it's uh, as even as possible. Otherwise the bend becomes uh, crazy. Okay, that one is now unnealed. Then the next side. That's it. It's on you. Yeah. That's it, really. <coughs> well, <laughs> now comes the tricky part. To put it into there and then bend it uh, from the anneal point so that it's, uh, well, suitably there. So this goes here from the back side to there and then I just bend it. Like here, it should bend. Oh, well, it didn't. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh man. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> oh man. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, uh, okay, oh, wow, and then we, uh, okay, well, an alternative for this kind of a spring is a coil spring here, but that's, okay, now it works really nicely, yeah, and, uh, yeah, 
there is a tension. Yeah, okay. Good. <coughs> well, the spring did not work. Man. Uh, well, I made a spring like this. Let me show you. That was the first iteration. And yeah, uh, it sort of worked, but uh, uh, it couldn't tension it all the way. So it was left something like in the halfway. And yeah, okay. And then I decided to drill two small holes into here. There is one, and the other one is there. So those holes are like uh, facing each other. And uh, uh, well, my intention is was to put a spring like this into there, like that. Okay, so it was sitting sitting there like this uh, and going there. But the problem with this spring is that, uh, well, when it's uh, tensioned and then when you squeeze it like this, it yields. So this is uh, not going to work for at least for very long. Okay. And uh, finally, <laughs> I decided to put something like this into there. And this works. You put this into the hole there, like that. It stays in that hole. And then you put the other end uh, at the other end of the hole. And there you are. And now it works all the way. Really nicely. It doesn't yield. And uh, it works. Okay. So, the problem with this one was how to bend the ends of this. Uh, uh, you see, there is a very specific bend on each end. And that was uh, really uh, something that uh, I struggled with, and now I'm struggling with this one. <laughs> ah, go there. Oh, there you go. Oh, now it's. It, it likes to be in a certain uh, position. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, now it's okay. Uh, so, yeah. So the problem was that. So how did I do it? Let me show you that one too. I take the rest of the spring I have. <coughs> this is the uh, end of that, uh, that spring. And uh, yeah. Uh, you need pliers for that. Uh, two types. First, these kind of things, and then these kind of things. First, uh, when you straighten out this, uh, you have to yield, uh, you have to anneal the end. If you don't, uh, this uh, either is really hard to do, and this is un not annealed, so this is hard to do. <laughs> Uh, and uh, uh, it also, when you bend a sharp corner, it, it might break. So, uh, I take it like this, in between the, like this, there, in between, the end, and then I squeeze, <laughs> then I squeeze. Uh, ah, this is hard, it's really hard. But when you work it out, like this, little by, by little, again, don't become greedy here. Oh, this was way easier. So then you can straighten, straighten the spring with this uh, uh, straight portion here. After that, you take these and put them inside there like that. And then you bend it. And this doesn't bend because it's not annealed. Uh, but when it's annealed, it's uh, well, it's still hard, but it's doable. <laughs> and uh, then you, uh, when you have it uh, there, then you just uh, put the bed uh, so that it's pointing directly out. Uh, 
Well, uh, uh, originally this was about this long. <laughs> uh, I, uh, this one here uh, is uh, the uh, iteration number, I think number three. <laughs> Uh, when I finally succeeded to get this uh, uh, about in the correct place. So, uh, well, now it's there and the next step will be then uh, making the actual tensioning mechanism. Oh yeah, and this is needed, this spring is needed to have a constant tension here to keep the tensioning mechanism in place. If you don't have a spring in here, like that, they will uh, will be dangling in the wind and uh, uh, the tensioning mechanism uh, will drop out. So that's the uh, purpose of this uh, spring. Well, you could also, I was thinking about that, you could put a spring in between here and uh, then uh, like uh, stretch it. Uh, that's one way to do it, yeah. But then you had to drill a hole all the way through uh, the, these uh, bars and uh, then make something uh, uh, bend here so that it doesn't uh, go, <laughs> so that it stays in place. And furthermore, that spring, when you put it into place, it stays there. You cannot uh, remove it or anything. It's uh, like, uh, uh, because you <laughs> when you straighten that uh, little uh, bed here, when you straighten it, uh, it will most likely break. And uh, yeah, so therefore I decided, I, I had that also in my mind, but I decided to uh, take this road, which is actually maybe a better one. But uh, if you make this tool, you can decide yourself uh, which uh, way to do it. But I can uh, already say that these versions both of these are, are not uh, eligible. <laughs> they don't uh, work as intended. So, yeah. So, next step, that's the mechanism. Okay, now uh, let's first uh, turn the nut uh, for this tensioning tool. Uh, there is a picture somewhere there, maybe. <laughs> Uh, so, well, I use this. This is way above 16 millimeters. And the reason for this is that the uh, slot this is going to ride in uh, is uh, a little bit over 16 millimeters. So I ha would have bar which is 16 millimeters, but it's uh, too small. Uh, well, so uh, actually, I have here this. Uh, workpiece and uh, it should be riding here and uh, well <laughs> uh, what I will do now I will uh, turn it down to a suitable uh, dimension so that it snugly fits into there and this is now just a simple
Well, it's almost there. Let's take another 0 0.2 millimeters, maybe. Yeah, okay. There you go. Okay. Check. <laughs> That's it. It's there now. Oh, there is a cheap there. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So now, uh, the thing here is, uh, let me put you on the frame again. So, uh, when I measure this, uh, I never touch the end with the, pla with, with the blade, but with this body. body, body. Like that. Now it's there, and I can reset my uh, uh, what is this travel indicator? Yeah. And uh, once again, this di dimension is not critical. It's just uh, it needs to be something. So now 16 millimeters. So 18 millimeters because the plate white is two. So 18 here. And then I feel here something. <laughs> Cutting oil. Yeah, okay, there you are. I think that's enough. Let's see. Uh, so, so, rotating the wrong way. Let's see now. Oil. <laughs> This goes really smoothly. Well, I think I can go all the way through here now. Well, it will drop into my chip pan. But it's almost empty, so let it go there. <laughs> will drop really soon, like that. Well, th this parting tool is uh, really remarkable. No uh, ill side effects. It's really like pleasure to use this one. The jack screw of the tension mechanism is made out of uh, M6 all thread with a ball attached uh, at the other end. <laughs> this ball needs a hole where the all thread attaches to. It is not advisable to attach a hard bearing ball directly to the chuck jaws as it will leave an impression on them. So. I make a ball holder first.
Now the ball can be securely attached without the damage to the chuck jaws. Some time ago I made a holder for my Dremel for small grinding tasks in the lathe. <laughs> in this case the hard outer layer of the bearing ball will be ground off so that a normal high speed steel drill can be used to drill the needed hole. <laughs> I keep the grinding dust off the vase with a rubber mat. I run the Dremel at 10,000 revolutions per minute. I am running the lathe backwards, because it makes less noise that way. The lathe is rotating quite slowly, about 120 revolutions per minute. The Dremel, on the other hand, is running fast, 10,000 revolutions per minute. I tried to use power feed at first but I soon realized that I can get better result by feeding it by hand. I use the top slide to push the grinding stone into the ball and the cross slide to move it sideways. At some point I noticed that it is better to keep the grinding stone still at the center and just feed it in with the top slide. After the hard skin of the ball was removed, the 5 mm stub drill had no trouble in drilling the needed hole. The end of the old thread was turned down to 5 mm which then fits in the 5 mm hole in the ball. Here I am making the knob for the tensioning mechanism. This knob will have a straight knurling on it. This is the first time in my entire life I am knurling something. <laughs> I have been digging around for information on this subject. Let's start with the diameter of the workpiece to be knurled. Knurling is a lot like machining a spur gear. The knurl bits must match with the diameter of the workpiece. In my knurling wheels there is a number which tells the bits of the knurl it produces. In this case, I am using a pair of knurling wheels that produce a knurl with 1.6 mm pitch. The circumference of the workpiece should now be divisible by that 1.6 mm. At beginning, the diameter of that workpiece was 25 millimeters and the length of the circumference is 25 times pi which is 78.54 millimeters. <coughs> now 
When that 78.54 is divided by 1.6, the result is 49.08. This means that there would be 49 teeth in the resulting null. The value is also near enough 49 to be called divisible by 1.6. I do not want to use that figure, as I want to turn off the outer surface of this workpiece. So, let's see what would the diameter be with a knurl with 48 tooth. So, 48 times 1.6 yields 76.6. And if I divide that with the pi, I will get 24.38. So, I turn this workpiece down to 24.38 mm and it should be good to go. Here I am about to begin my first knurling job. It will be a straight knurl, which is supposed to be hard to get right. I have adjusted the tool using the cross slide so that the wheels are quite exactly at the opposite sides of the workpiece. The knurling wheels are also straight as I always keep the top slide straight. I start carefully to see how this works. Since this knurl is somewhat coarse, <laughs> it makes a coarse sound. Nothing much happened, so I dig deeper by setting more tension. This time I also use manual feed instead of the too slow power feed. Seems like the knur is forming the correct way. Hmm. So, I dig deeper. Now I try something different. I loosen the tension and move the wheels over the workpiece before starting the lathe. I add tension while the lathe is turning and it works fine.
Now, the workpiece has a straight knurl on it. So, uh, now, uh, <laughs> we have a knurling tool, actually, uh, and the first knurl I made here with it. And, uh, well, it's not bad. Uh, actually, it's quite good. So, and uh, this has uh, quite a large range of diameters, starting from... Starting from nothing, yeah, from nothing to I think uh, that's uh, usable. Right? Uh, well, you can actually. Uh, it's a little bit loose here already, so let's say that's the maximum <laughs> diameter one can easily ignore with this one. Well, uh, it's uh, 55 millimeters the diameter. Uh, uh, well, it's uh, already quite large. Yeah, okay. Uh, but you can go further than that. Just, I think you can go over 60. That's, that's the limit now. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Yeah, if you really, really need to knurl something uh, quite large a diameter, 70 millimeters. Well, <coughs> okay, so. Uh, and this is already like uh, flapping in the wind. <laughs> yeah, I think the 55 millimeters is a decent uh, one. This is mainly for smaller diameters. 
So I chose a quite coarse uh, uh, knurr for this one, and uh, it feels good. No sharp edges. Uh, I used the uh, uh, wire brush in my drill press uh, to get rid of those, and uh, all in all, it's a very good one. There is one thing missing, though, here. There is these uh, retainers, uh, retainers for these. Uh, Beans here. It's a sleeve which you slide on top of them so they cannot come out. I leave uh, the machining up to you if you want to make such a tool. There are the technical drawings in the description. There is a link to my Google Drive. I found out making this, uh, well, uh, it's actually quite easy. What was not so easy is this uh, spring here. I was uh, really struggling to get it right. And I'm still not uh, really satisfied with it, but it works now. Uh, other than that, it was, uh, I think, uh, not exactly a trip in the park, but not quite far from that. And it makes a decent knurr, really. In the next episode of Finno Greek Marcy, hmm, what shall it be? <laughs> You never know. But till then, bye!